Alright guys, I am back with my review of The Walking Dead Season 4, Episode 4, Indifference. And I like the beginning of this episode with Carol talking to the little girl, and Rick is imagining what she did when she killed those poor people, and how she stabbed them in the head, and set their bodies on fire. And then we see Daryl's group... And they're on foot now because their car got screwed up. And Tyrese is just a loose cannon. He's losing it, big time. Uh, they find a house and they're checking things out. And Tyrese is just hacking away at these vines. And Daryl tells him to calm down. But he just keeps going and he ends up letting all these zombies out. And then when they're fighting the zombies, he like grabs one of them. And he won't let go, for whatever reason. And I thought it was going to be something cool, like he's going to rip the guy's arms off. But no, they just end up having to save him, so he thinks he's a badass, grabbing this zombie. And the Michonne has to save him, because the zombie falls on him, and he's like, Oh shit, well, you thought you were a badass, that's what you get. So Tyrese is actually annoying me now. <clears throat> but then we see Rick and Carol... They leave the prison. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it told us. I guess because Daryl's group hasn't returned yet, so they want to go try to find him. And Carol is telling Rick she had to do it because it was the humane thing to do. She was putting them out of their misery. They would have choked to death on their own blood or some crap. She's trying to spin it, you know. Uh, but anyways, they find a random house and they go inside and they kill a zombie and then these two kids come out they're really dirty one of them has a cut and so Carol fixes them up and um, they're questioning them they're suspicious of these two so they're asking them questions like where they came from and all this stuff and they call the walkers skin eaters so they ask hey you guys look pretty good what's your setup like talking to Rick and Carol and Rick says, skin eaters, huh? We call them walkers. How many have you killed? Now this is what pisses me off. Where does Rick and Carol get off talking to other people like they're hot shit? Yeah, you've been alive for a long time. You want to know why? Because you fucking mooch off of other people and take everything they have. And then when the shit hits the fan because you're all fucking morons, you leave and go somewhere else. That's what happens every single time with these freaks. If you see Rick's group coming, get the fuck out of the way, because it means they're going to screw up everything for you. That's their group. The group is terrible. They're horrible people. So, it really pisses me off. For example, Herschel's Farm. That's the only reason they've even survived this long. That whole thing went to hell because they wouldn't get rid of Shane. And, I mean, they set fire to the place. It was it was terrible. And then you had the prison and the governor, and they screwed up everything for all the people in the governor's town. Okay, the governor was a sick freak, yeah, but those people had a community at least. That's gone. Not only is it gone, the governor killed them all because of Rick's group. So they indirectly affect things, even when they're not trying to. Um, and their group itself, they haven't really lasted that long. It's dwindled down to, like, Carol, Rick, Glenn, and Daryl. If you want to count the original members and Carl. Everyone else who was in the group from the beginning, T-Dog, Shane, Lori, they're all fucking dead, Rick. Andrea. So maybe your little process of asking questions, you need to ask yourself some questions. I don't know why I just went off on this rant, but I'm like halfway through the episode, and that just really pissed me off how they're going to question these kids. How many walkers have you killed? How many people have you killed? Like, who the fuck are you, man? So Daryl's group finds out that the zombies they just killed were actually part of a suicide pact. They all decided to kill themselves rather than live in this zombie-infested world, which I thought was pretty interesting. And actually, one of them's still alive, but he gets stabbed in the head with a bathroom key. And Bob is telling Daryl how he used to drink every night, just when it got quiet. It was how he coped with everything that was happening, and Daryl says, you're not going to be alone again. They get the car started, and they make it to the veterinarian school. 
and they go in, they get all the supplies and the medicine, and everything is good, but then they run into some zombies. And they can't actually kill the zombies because they're infected with that disease. So if they get the blood on them, they could get sick. So I thought that was really interesting too. So they have to escape from the school. All these zombies are after them. And they make it outside, and Bob slips. And the bag he was carrying falls down, but he's still holding on to it. So the zombies are grabbing at the bag. And Tyrese and Michonne and Daryl are like, just let it go, man. But he refuses. He's holding on to this bag. He's risking his life for this bag. So when they get it up, Daryl checks it. And he's like, there's not even any medicine in this bag. Instead, it's a bottle of booze. And it's not even really enough to get you fucked up either. But he's pissed off because he knows this guy was trying to risk his life for this alcohol. So he gets ready to throw it. And Bob goes for his gun. <laughs> He's about to shoot Daryl over this, like, half-drunk bottle of alcohol. So, uh, Daryl gets in his face, and he takes his gun. And he says, if you drink any of this before our people get their medicine, I'll beat your ass. And they go to leave. And that was pretty much it. But yeah, this was, uh, this was pretty intense, and, um... It definitely adds some more character development to this uh, Bob guy. Now, on to the good stuff. So, Rick and Carol are talking to those kids. And Rick tells them, We're going to circle around and look for some supplies. We'll come back and pick you guys up before dark. And the kids are like, We want to help. We can go get some more fruit or something. Uh, we want to help you guys out. Pull our own weight. And Carol's like, we should let them. We should let them help us out. So Rick is reluctant, but he says, okay, here's a couple of guns. He gives them guns. And Rick and Carol go off, and they're picking tomatoes, and Carol is talking about her abusive ex-husband and her daughter and all that crap. Trying to build some sympathy for this lame-ass character. And then when they go to leave, they see some fruit that's been dropped. And the leg of the girl. And she's being eaten by zombies across the street. Two zombies! These fucking kids had guns, man. How does that happen? These things are so slow. And Michonne just, like, cuts through them like butter. Just barely touches them. They, like, fall to fucking pieces. And you're telling me these kids... Whatever. So the girl is dead. Rick is upset about this, and... Carol tells him later on about how, or uh, they go back to the house to wait for the other guy because we don't know if the other kid's dead or alive. So they're waiting for him, and Carol is talking about how she did what she had to do, and um, Rick doesn't have to like it. He just has to accept it. Like, is she the leader of the group now? Who does she think she is? And... The kid doesn't show up. Rick's like, we should give him some more time. And Carol's like, Rick, it's time to go. Oh, this made me mad. This made me so mad. But they get ready to leave, and they're outside at the car, and Rick tells Carol, when Tyrese finds out what you did, he's going to kill you. She's like, I can handle Tyrese. And he says, when the others find out, they're not going to want you there. And if it was me, Carl, and Judith, I wouldn't want you around either. Even if it was just us. And he banishes her from the prison. Instantly. She doesn't get to go back and say goodbye. And she's like, well, I'm not leaving without those girls. Um, the girls of their... Uh, the guy she killed, their father, his children. She's like, I'm not leaving without them. And Rick's like... We'll keep them safe. One of them's sick. And so Carol is forced to leave. And she takes a car, he gives her some supplies, and she drives off. And I'm sure she's going to be back, probably as a villain. Uh, not like a big villain like the governor, but I'm sure she's going to come back and try to get those girls or something screwed up. Um, hopefully she'll just go off on her own and die, and it'll just show us that. But yeah, I think she's going to be back. But Rick is driving back to the prison, and that's how the episode ended. Very happy about this. I'm glad Carol has been kicked out. And ideally, 
she would just end up dying on her own. But yeah, she'll probably be back. But I did like this episode. You had a lot of action with Daryl's group here. Um, the stuff with Daryl and Bob was good. Rip kicking Carol out of the group was good. And that kid, we never, um, it was like a guy and a girl. And the girl we saw die. But the other guy, we don't really know what happened to him. And Rick told him where the prison was. So I don't even know if he's dead. But um, he'll probably be back too, if I had to guess. But anyways, this was a good episode. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this episode in the comments. And thanks for watching.